So while the world is celebrating the first completely private mission to space, a very important event in the grand scheme of spaceflight, an even greater miracle has happened. Jeff Bezos is actually congratulating Elon Musk and SpaceX for this accomplishment. What? How is such a thing even possible? And while the whole world is watching this fascinating event, I meant the Inspiration4 flight, not Jeff Bezos congratulating, three Chinese astronauts have returned from a three month long stay aboard the Chinese space station. Many historic things are happening here, so let's talk about it. On Wednesday 8.02 pm Eastern Daytime, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off of Launch Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center. This is the same launch pad from which the Apollo missions started from, by the way. Not quite as impressive as the Apollo launches back in the day. That launch, though, was also very important and historic. Because this was the first completely private spaceflight in human history. The Inspiration4 crew is commanded by Jared Isaacman, a 38 years young billionaire businessman. This guy is two years younger than me and already a billionaire. What the f did I do wrong with my life? Uh, sorry, I was just thinking loud. Um, so he paid SpaceX to charter the four seat Crew Dragon spacecraft for three days in orbit. He's joined by Cyan Proctor, 51, a professor at an Arizona community college who serves as the mission's pilot. The other crew members are Haley Arsenault, a 29 year old physician assistant at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and Chris Zimbrowski. Why the hell can't those people have normal names? Uh, a 42 year old data engineer from the Seattle area who works for Lockheed Martin. Well, at least he's not working for Boeing, right? <laughs> Isaac Mann donated $100 million to St. Jude's Children Hospital and started a fundraising effort linked to the Inspiration4 mission to try to raise $100 million more. So this mission has a noble cause for charity, which makes the whole thing even cooler. But now why should this mission be so important? I mean, come on, 600 people have flown to space before. Yuri Gagarin had already flown to space 60 years ago. So why should this be so special? Well, because it's the first time that everything is private. It's the first time in human history that the government is only a spectator here. Let's take Dennis Tito for example, who in April 2001 became the very first space tourist. He went to space on a Russian TM-32 with two other cosmonauts and he spent almost 8 days in space, but on the space station Mir. The rocket, the Soyuz spacecraft and the Mir space station were all government owned by Russia. After Tito, quite a few more private individuals went to space on what can be called tourism missions. Six further private individuals visited either the space station Mir or the International Space Station with Soyuz spacecrafts, the last in 2009. Not much has happened since then because after the shuttle had retired in 2011, the US had to book flights to the ISS with the Russian Soyuz. So it was already fully booked for US astronauts and thus no space tourism took place after 2009, which is quite weird. It was only on June 7, 2019 that NASA announced to open the ISS to space tourism again. However, now with Inspiration4, it is entirely different. Hence, this is not classical space tourism that we are witnessing here but the first completely 100% private space mission. SpaceX provided the rocket and the space capsule, which by the way even has a really neat cupola, where the spacefarers can look outside and marvel at the beauty of Earth from 400 kilometers above the surface. So SpaceX already gives us a glimpse of the future for private missions. And we know that many more private missions will follow. This was only the first of its kind. Of course, the most epic one in the next years 
will be Yuzaku Mitsawa's Dear Moon mission, where he himself and eight further people will be the first private individuals to circle the moon. Now this will be an entirely different beast compared to Inspiration 4, as it will take place with the next generation space vehicle Starship. The Crew Dragon of Inspiration 4 has an interior pressurized volume of 9.3 cubic meters for 4 people, while the Dear Moon mission will offer 1000 cubic meters of interior pressurized space for 9 people. So each person will have more than 100 cubic meters of space on average, which is just crazy compared to the 2.3 cubic meters per person in Crew Dragon with 4 people. A factor of 43 difference, that's insane. But Inspiration 4 lays the groundwork. We can see this as an enabler or precursor mission for later more spectacular private space missions. First maybe deeper into space, then at some point around the moon, then later on private moon landing missions and then of course at some point fully private missions to Mars. Because that's the end goal of SpaceX as we know and everything that happens now is a step towards that big end goal. But you won't believe it, even Jeff Bezos was impressed and what is even more astounding, this time he didn't even file a lawsuit. What? No lawsuit? But he instead congratulated Elon Musk and SpaceX on that amazing success. I mean, well, well, I don't know what to say. What, what's next? Jeff inviting Elon over for a beer or what? Anyway, that's a nice development and it's nice to see that Jeff is still a human being after all. Oh, and I would be really happy if you'd subscribe to this modest channel here as it would tremendously help us to continue pumping out lots of YouTube videos. So thanks a lot in advance. And while the crew of Inspiration 4 are circling the Earth and probably making some really nice photos and videos from the cupola, the Chinese are also doing pretty impressive stuff. Three Chinese astronauts whose names I do not dare to utter because my Chinese sucks despite my wife Jishuan having taught me many words, have just landed on September 17th, returning from a three-month visit to the Chinese space station. The Chinese space station currently only consists of one module, the Tianhe module, but China of course plans to expand the space station in the coming years and they intend to finish it until 2023. As we can see here, the interior is actually surprisingly spacious. The Tianhe core module has a length of 16.6 meters and a diameter of 4.2 meters, offering a total interior volume of 50 cubic meters. While on board, the three Taikonauts even performed some space walks in order to get the core module fully up and running and prepare it for future visits. And future visits will be plentiful as more modules will be docked to the core module in the coming two years until the station will be fully finished. Now after the ISS is going to be retired, it could actually happen that the Chinese space station will be the only space station orbiting the Earth. But of course that depends on how soon the ISS will actually be retired. If the ISS stays in orbit until 2028, then no, because until then private space stations will be brought to space, such as for example the Axiom space station. However, should the ISS indeed be already retired in 2024, then it could actually happen that the Chinese space station could be the only space station at least for a brief period of time. But even that might actually not be the case after all, since we know that one starship, only one starship, would have to be launched to orbit and just remain in orbit and it would then serve as a space station. Because one starship has actually even more interior volume than the entire International Space Station, believe it or not. With 1000 cubic meters of interior volume as compared to the ISS's interior volume of 900 cubic meters. 
So Starship could really completely disrupt the space station business and we are curious how that will turn out. But as for now, China made some really impressive advances with its human spaceflight program and it's fascinating to see so many different people travel to and back from space at the same time. The more common space travel becomes, the better because that means space travel will become mainstream at some point and that means prices will come down even further so that in the not too distant future even us everyday people will be able to afford a ticket to space and one day even to Mars. However, the real era of opening up space for everyday people will have only really begun when Starship flies humans to space on a regular basis. Because only Starship can bring prices down enough in order to allow that. With an estimated launch cost of only $2 million per launch and a capacity of 100 people for shorter duration travel, a Starship could bring people to space for only $20,000 per person. That would be a factor of 2000 lower than the current cost per seat for Inspiration 4 of roughly $40 million per seat. So yeah, that is a really good price decrease, we dare say. Thus, we have to be a bit more patient with space tourism on a larger scale until this bad boy here will fly regularly. However, Inspiration4 laid the groundwork with this historic mission. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Jishuan and me wish you a nice day and all the best. And then I would say on to the future. <laughs>